Alrighty, well, welcome to the stream, everyone. So at the moment, uh, we are on D deck in the. Uh, let's let's introduce ourselves first. Uh, Matt, you want to go ahead? Oh, I'm Matthew Smathers, Titanic Connections, and one of the co-founders for Titanic Archive Project. Also a co-admin for ti <clears throat> Titanic Connections. And Ryan. Hello, my name is Ryan Weird, founder of Titanic Connections. Alrighty, uh, and I am Spencer Literal. I am one of the other co-founders of the Titanic Archive Project. I am not an admin with Titanic Connections. Uh, so for today, we were just kind of wanting to do a somewhat casual stream, but we're going to be going over some footage from both the interior and exterior of the wreck, and just kind of going over what we see and taking questions from the audience. So just to make sure we're all synced up here, um, we're going to be using the TCR timestamps in the bottom right of the footage to make sure we're all synchronized. And if you guys just want to pause really quick, um, not, not the people watching the stream, just the... Uh, the guy's streaming here. If you guys just want to pause quick and we'll synchronize our TCR stamps. And pausing in three, two, one, paused. Okay, I am at 15, 15, 09, 17. Hold on a moment. I think I'm in the wrong thing here, chaps. Are you in the exterior footage or the D deck footage? Uh, I'm just going on two seconds. You guys go ahead a second. Hold on. Fifteen, fifteen, oh nine. I am at. Alrighty, uh, it's about a minute and fifteen seconds in. Fifteen seconds. Oh, I I'm gonna go ahead and. Oh, actually, let's uh, back it up to the beginning of the stream here. Uh, you're back to the beginning of the. Uh, go back to the beginning of the footage here. I've got to switch to the active window. So just go ahead and go to zero 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 on the D deck footage, and we'll get started here. TCR timestamp at zero 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 should be fourteen fifty seven oh eight oh five. Alrighty, uh, are you guys ready? Yes, sir. Ryan. So <coughs> yeah, zero zero zero. Alrighty, and this is all on DX, so we'll go ahead and start in three, two, one. So we're starting off here, I believe, Matt, this is in the reception room, just near the Grand Staircase, isn't it? Yes, this is just inside the foyer of the Grand Staircase. You can see a light fixture dangling here, and I do believe this is one of the uptake casings for the boilers. Of course, you have a real nice uh, crystal chandelier here. One of the leaded and crystal chandeliers. Now these were the ones that were beaded, correct? Yes, these are beaded crystal. And nice it's... ornate. They were they were only in and around the grand staircase. There were different there were different chandeliers at various levels, or at least there were different variants. Uh, and so and we've. Person... We've now we're actually looking, you see this, the, where the Jake's lights, this is the ROV Jake, he's indicating what kind of looks like an L. That's actually the door frame. This is the door frame for the, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the first class dining saloon on D-Deck. So this would have been the double doors that entered into the dining saloon, which of course is now, most of it is crushed, unfortunately. So I believe uh, it's not in the dining saloon on, or at least it's not on this side, but is there not one of these doors that still has some of the metal framework in place leading into the dining saloon from the reception room? Uh, no. Uh, the, the doors leading into the dining saloon were blown out during the sinking. Uh, they don't seem to be there on port or starboard. In this case, we are on the, um, <clears throat> we are on the starboard side of the ship in this particular part but the the double doors do exist to a certain degree on the entry vestibule which we're going to see in just a little while basically the double doors where you see in the movie titanic because the 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 ornate iron door the grill work that you see in the movie was a combination of real footage and a set a replica lovely silt up there 
yeah. Oh. That was yep. pleasant. Um, <laughs> not, not, not to interrupt you too bad. We're getting into the dining saloon here, correct? We've got the collapsed yeah. ceiling overhead kind of sloping yeah, down this here. Is, yeah, this is actually the interior of the dining saloon. And you can see a very small little light fixture just dangling center left and the base of a table. And of course, you see the windows, the iconic windows, or the now iconic windows, I should say, are coming into frame. Which it seems they really just kind of got lucky there, because you move, what, five, six feet further aft, and that, even the hole there is blown out, and it looks like you might have some remnants of maybe the framework of those windows a little further back, but not much else. Yeah, it's in the background directly under that little light fixture. It was just visible but it looks like a crushed window frame. But yeah, this, this was just incredibly fortunate that this survived the destruction that occurred in this space. And, and it really is kind of also incredible. There's, it looks like there's almost no damage to the windows themselves. I mean, I think they get a little bit closer here in a moment, but they have one of the little tiles for the leaded glass popped out, of course, to equalize the pressure. But if you look at the reception room windows just a little bit more forward, you see a lot of the... Uh, metal that held in those leaded glass tiles has been kind of forced in by water pressure, but these seem to be fairly intact relative to most of the reception room windows, which of course they're all still there, but they in most cases seem to have suffered a bit more damage. Yeah. It's just oh, well as Cameron would say, got that out of the way. <laughs> uh, oh, actually, uh, here, you guys want to pause quick in just three, two, one. We're at 15.20.01.23 on the TCR stamp, right? Right. So if we just back up one click with the arrow key here for about five seconds, maybe two, you can see uh, the ROV Jake here actually seems to get himself a little bit tangled up with one of these light fixtures. If you're at like 15.19.52.15. 15.19.52.15. 15, oh, yeah, it sort of bumps into it. Yeah. And uh, here, we'll go ahead and hit play again in three, two, one. But you have the ROV just kind of impacts it very, very lightly and kind of pulls it forward. And the, the chandelier yeah. kind of just swings for a minute. But it impresses me that even with the chandelier hanging down like that for Lord knows how long, you've got an ROV actually hits it and it still stays in place. Uh, just so I'm synchronized, what is your TCR timestamp? Go ahead and pause in three, two, one. Pause. Okay. I'm at fifteen twenty two forty oh seven. Okay, I was just making sure because I had accidentally paused and I wasn't sure if I was synchronized. I apologize. Well, no, you're second. Good. I need to get synchronized again. Now. Alrighty, it's uh <laughs> again. It's fifteen twenty two forty oh seven. And at this time frame, you can actually see the base of one of the columns that still has at least some of its woodwork still intact. Are, are you uh, synchronized, Brian? Uh, the, the, the video timestamp is 424. 424. I'm back. Alrighty, ready? And we'll play in three, two, one, play. Go. So we're moving into one right. of the hand carved Fun wooden fact columns here. About those columns. The columns, it, we see all over the grand staircase these metal supports. The, some, there are some that still, you know, that may or may not know this, that the columns themselves were not solid wood, but they were actually like or, these panels of ornately carved white oak that just sort of encapsulated and surrounded the metal structure supports for the staircase. Uh, hey, Matt, we've had a couple of people mentioning that your microphone is just a little bit quiet. Is there a way you can move it closer to your mouth? Uh, it's... Oh, that's actually better already. <laughs> well, okay, then. There we go. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so you were saying... I kind of lost my train of thought there. I was just mentioning about how the uh, the support columns themselves were not made of solid wood, but they were just the metal, they were structural support for the staircase that were encapsulated with wood. Oh, hang on a second here. Uh, are you guys around 1524, right? For TCR? Yes, and we're looking now at the... we are... Oh, 
let's back up a couple minutes or back up a couple uh, clicks on the left arrow key there. This uh, wooden structure here. I was noticing uh, kind of off to the right of it here, there's a brief moment you get a bit of a glimpse of light coming in from somewhere. Is this the funnel uptake here around 1524? 1524? Uh, no, that might actually be a crack in the structure because I know there was a little bit of backlighting that was occurring. That might actually be a, ref a reflection. It depends at what stage of the expedition this was filmed. It could have been some backlighting from the mirrors. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I paused again here. Um, we're at the just cut to the reception room windows. Five minutes thirty-seven seconds. TCR fifteen twenty-five twenty-eight oh three. Okay. I, I just oh. wanted to pause there while we talked about that, but I, I was curious if maybe some of that woodwork on the uh, uptake had survived at all. But got a little overexcited there for a minute. All right, I see. Yeah, just give me the uh, timestamp on the video. I'm like on a different thing from you guys. Uh, it is 0537 on the video timestamp, and the TCR is 1525-2803. Uh, General Skywalker in chat has noted that he was spotting the bases of some of the dining room chairs uh, that are still there. I believe those were... Uh, were those not bolted down? Uh, no. The They were bolted down on some other ships later on. However, in the case of the Titanic's um, first-class dining saloon, I do believe the chairs were actually free, you know, freely able to move. Gotcha. Well, in that case, it is even more impressive. There were the table bases bolted down. Yes, the okay. table bases were most definitely bolted down. Gotcha. I, I do believe they were um, interchangeable, if you will, but I think the layout of the room was basically permanent. It was meant to be permanent. Short of a refit, like they did with Olympic in the, uh, what was it, the 20s they installed the dance floor? Yes. So are you guys on the 537, 1525 still? What's that on the, just tell me what it is on the actual YouTube video, it's just easier, <laughs> it just makes it easier to sync up my end. All right, uh, it'll be five minutes, 37 seconds. All right, five minutes, 37 seconds. All right, it should be looking... 27. Yeah, you should be looking at one of the uh, reception room windows here. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and hit play in three, two, one, play. Okay. So, as we were talking about just a bit earlier with the dining room windows, they seem to be relatively flat against the wall still. Um, not particularly caved in by, or by pressure. Obviously, one of the tiles had been uh, popped out by the pressure to equalize it, but they seemed very intact. And as we're going up this wall here towards the fore end of the dining saloon, you'll see a couple of these reception room windows that are unfortunately not quite as intact as this one. Like, I, you can see at the base there, this one's kind of been pushed in by the pressure even as it popped out one of the tiles. Oh, uh, at the ce yeah, I was going to say ceiling. We had a well, don't let's not let's not keep jumping around. But there was just a very brief shot of the ceiling there. And there was actually a completely intact light fixture dangling up above. I just saw it, but it didn't it was missing its uh, crystal grill. Oh, but look at that woodwork. Uh, that so... is actually that is a planter uh, that we just caught a glimpse of, by the way. That was actually a planter for a potted plant that was made of carved oak. So another note about the ceiling that we just saw up there, it, it's you'd have to pause at a very specific frame to see it, but there is a brief glimpse of what appears to be some of the wiring that leads down to the linolite fixtures behind these reception room windows that you can see through a hole in the woodwork in the ceiling. And we're gonna, yeah, there we go. Actually, you can see it right now uh, around the TCR 1527. They're looking up at the yep. ceiling, and you can see these yep, two I these two it. cables coming out of the light fixture and down towards those uh those windows. And oh oh god, look at that! There was like the little. It's too bad that the crystal uh, dome is gone. But I I for a brief second I actually could see the little the the screw that would have the cap that would have screwed it on, and it was still attached. It's, it's just fascinating that that particular part, see, you have chandeliers that are dangling elsewhere, but here it's perfectly intact. Yeah, you know, I think it might be a case, were those uh, domes, were they uh, sealed against the ceiling? 
No, they they were not. the The domes were much like a regular light fixture. You could unscrew a cap, and they were removable, so they could replace the bulbs. These particular light fixtures had uh, five light bulbs. Uh, so we're on the fifteen twenty eight TCR mark now. There's uh, kind of a white tube worm, as it appears, looking at the wood there. Would that not be a fairly advanced case of Torito worm there? Yes, that is a Torito worm, as you called it, and they they particularly love this mahogany and oak paneling that graces the room. You're going to see quite a few of these in this oh, footage. Oh, I've just seen something that's quite cool. Uh, we're at the 1528 mark, and it's kind of to the right of the window. The wood paneling is there. It looks like you can see the riveting pattern on the inside of the hole between the wood paneling and the... Uh, the actual outer outer hole there. It looks like you can almost see the riveting. It's, it's also quite interesting the way that window we're looking at is it wants, you can't see it now, but at a certain angle, it sort of goes out, like up and out, and then back in again, sort of out again, like sort of like zigzagging up the window. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. I see. Yeah, no, I know what you, I know exactly what you mean. I, when we had watched, me and Spencer had watched some of this footage before, and we came to a conclusion that during the sinking, there must have been furniture floating around here, and most likely, during the, during the sinking, furniture probably bashed into the window. Not enough to break it, but enough to at least cause damage. Although I do like, uh, we've kind of passed it now, but on that last window we were looking at, there are a couple of fairly large tiles of leaded glass that have been broken out, and behind those you can see the diffusing paneling that they use to diffuse light from the portholes and from the line of light fixtures uh, so that it evened it out over the windows, and, and I love you can see those little tiles of diffusion back there, but only in the spots where that stuff's broken out at just the right angle. Some of these things that, you know, if they were perfectly intact, we'd never get a glimpse at, but because they have just that little bit of damage, just something that you wouldn't otherwise be able to see. And it did seem to be, uh, uh go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just saying, I was just going to comment about how I love how beautifully intact this glass is. But it's, it's also a little deceptive, I think, because I don't think nearly as many glass panels as we're seeing are actually, uh, I mean, I know some of them were, but not all of them were leaded. You know, they didn't have coloration on them. And I feel like that might be like from silt buildup that's kind of giving them a little extra color than what they were designed for. But now, now I see we're going to the, that another oak planter. This actually makes an appearance in Ghosts of the Abyss, this particular planter. We see this in Ghosts of the Abyss. Makes me kind of chuckle a little bit wondering how much of the silt in there is still original. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dirt doesn't right. degrade at the bottom of the ocean, so you know you might have a little bit in there. Obviously, the plant's long gone, but you might have a little bit of that original dirt. I love this, the white, the white paint around this frame still visible. And that, ooh, is that decorative wood? Is that decorative wood? Uh, you might have some. It's kind of scooting around in this mess. Um, Amber Ray is asking why the windows didn't break during the sinking. Uh, from my understanding, it's largely because as pressure mounted on these windows, because they were made of so many individual tiles of leaded glass, individual tiles would be pushed out by the pressure at the weakest point, and then it would flood the space between the hole and the window and equalize the pressure. So once you have that pressure equalized, there's not really much anything that's going to damage them, particularly because leaded glass is such a strong material. The... the... <laughs> The, the, the non-techy answer is that because this wa this room was largely flooded, it, it, it basically equalized with the pressure fairly quickly. So the only impact this room really felt was when Titanic hit the bottom. That's, that's the non-techy answer. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, and obviously some of them were damaged during the sinking anyway by, as Matt was saying earlier, furniture being pushed around the room as it went down. And to some effect, you may even have the, the downblast effect coming down the stairwell and forcing a little bit more of the hydraulic pressure. That water coming down and out through the room might have pushed some of them against the frames just that little bit more. But, you know, it's, it, it's difficult to say. They have varying degrees of damage, but for the most part, they are intact. I had a lovely close-up of the backside of one of those fixtures there. Yeah. 
Uh, the the video keeps cutting. And I do believe we are now back at the Grand Staircase. That should be the dark area to the left. And, yeah, I believe you're right. And I believe straight ahead, that dark area may or may not be where the elevators are. We're getting real well, We've got a door here. With the chandelier. What's your, what's your TCR's timestamp? Uh, 1559. 46. Okay, I'm, okay. I'm a few seconds behind you, I think. Okay. Yeah, and I think oh, this is where we're starting to move forward into the corridors with the cabins. Okay. We took the pass back around the uh, starboard side of the reception room, moved forward, and now I think we're either in the vestibule or just a little bit forward of it. Okay. Yeah, just We've got a lot of silt here. Big silt up. I, I do believe uh, later on in this video, it's, it's minor spoilers here, uh, this is the... This is what they were doing when they had the uh, Elwood ROV failure. And this is from Elwood's perspective. So this one ends very abruptly because y you see the, the feed starts to glitch out a bit. You have it go black and white a couple of times, then it cuts entirely, and then you see just a brief moment of the ROV kind of descending, and then it just cuts entirely. Which we also have in our uh, archive, we have the footage of the recovery of this ROV after this particular incident. But this is what they were doing when it went wrong just <laughs> trying to get my trying to get my bearings here uh i do okay so i don't know if you just saw the lights of the jake rov up ahead of us um that there i believe he's in d37 at the moment and we're gonna move up there mm -hmm. and join him in d37 uh amber thanks me for the technical answer and thanks matthew for the non-technical answer <laughs> <laughs> And you're welcome. Uh, uh, we have someone commenting. It says, it's so sad. The only thing that remained from the Grand Staircase is the big hole. Which, to an extent, is true. But you do have some of the framework still intact on the D and E deck landings. Which I believe we'll get a look at later on in this clip. But I'm not entirely sure if it's this one. We, we can look at a... Hello? We can look at some more interior footage. Uh, Spen Ryan, can uh, you hear Spencer, us? Spencer, you... Yeah, uh, Spencer, Spencer you, you, out there. you broke out. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, the, the Grand Staircase does have some of its iron framework still intact on the D and E deck levels. I'm not sure if we'll see it in this particular video, but we may uh, a bit later on. So you, you guys so can still we, hear me, right? Yeah. Okay. We may or may not be looking... Yeah, this is the... This is the corridor, it doesn't yeah. Look like, yeah, it doesn't look like much, but that dark space directly in front of us, that is actually the first-class corridor on D-deck looking forward. This kind of dark, shaded area to, now we're looking at it on the left, that is a crack looking into a bathroom. And to the right, that would have been, well, I mean, it should have been a wall, but we're actually looking into cabins D-35 and D-37 on the right. And now you can actually see it because the lights yeah. have been turned on. And you now can you see... Can actually yeah, you can see the, the, the hallway, kind of. Yeah, you can see the the cabling. They, they had it hidden inside the wooden paneling in this hallway that was fed to the rest of the deck for lighting, heating, all that. But because these wooden panels are gone, all this cabling is just hanging down from the ceiling. But gives you a rough idea where those walls would have been. Yeah, also makes for a very hairy uh, diving experience because these these could easily trap the ROV so easily. Oh, we've cut again. I believe we're in D37 now. Um, I think you're, the lights up ahead are from Jake, and I believe they're inspecting a, It's a wash stand, I think. Elwood's going to come around the corner here, and you'll get a better look at it. Which yeah. I do find this particular bit of footage... It's, it's a shame this was never in any of the documentaries in its full resolution, because like, I find this to be incredibly cinematic footage. Just with all the really nice blue lighting in the background and the green lighting from the ROV's lights, all the contrast with the shadows, it just it looks really nice. Uh, just a little fun fact. Uh, Jake is in D37, and uh, Elwood right now, we're kind of in the dark, but Elwood is actually in the ruins of cabin D35, which was... <clears throat> I actually looked it up. It was the cabin of uh, Mr. Charles Leonard Beckwith from Hartford, Connecticut, and he did survive the sinking of the Titanic. 
So apparently this room, he did survive. Uh, and worth a note, we actually posted about this on our page. Uh, D37 was uh, Frank Warren and his wife, uh, who I believe her name was Anna. And Oh, if, look very carefully. That's a bed. Uh, you have a, the posts. That's a bed frame. So the 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 wooden posts. I do believe that's a bed frame. I I would agree with that. There, yeah. Uh, that open porthole right ahead of us. I I've checked with the deck plants, and that open porthole there should be from D thirty seven. And the bed that we were just looking at would have been sitting underneath that porthole originally, but has mm -hmm. sort of slid out. But that would have been. I mean, we, we don't know for sure, obviously, but there's every possibility this was the Warrens opening this porthole on the night of the sinking to give a little bit of airflow into their cabin. Uh, unfortunately, Frank Warren did not survive, and his body was never found. Mm. This particular porthole that we just that's just flashed across the screen was actually a, a hallway porthole over a uh, over a linen storage. There was a small corridor that separated the cabins D-37 with D-33 right across the hall. And if you look to the left, uh, if if Elwood will turn around a little bit to the left, there's actually a remnant of a door. But now I think we're, we're crossing over into D-33, and this is just a really big mess. Big mess here. Um, Amber is asking if all 200 miles of Titanic's electrical wires are exposed. Uh, I would imagine maybe... I imagine so. <laughs> I, I don't know about all of it, because you do have... Uh, we'll see later on, there's the distribution panel in the vestibule, and that wall's still up, and none of that cabling's exposed. So I would imagine probably 40 to 50% at least, but maybe not all of it. So we have a wash basin that's been tipped, and we have the remnants of a door... Now, based on the blueprints, I know we had a cut there. We had a bit of a cut. I do think this is actually the this is actually cabin D twenty seven. This could actually be cabin D twenty seven, and we just had another cut. It's it's uh somewhat frustrating. We don't actually have the the full versions of this footage. Um, I believe Cyark. We originally got this footage uh, through Cyark, who was going to publish it, but they ended up uh, not following through with the project that they were working on. It was going to be the Titanic database project, and they had about 50 hours of footage from the James Cameron expeditions. They got seven of the hours that they had uploaded, and then I believe their company restructured, and their focus shifted away from video footage um, to modeling. Uh, I don't want to interrupt you, but if you look very carefully on the bottom of the screen, there is a coat rack that just passed by. I just saw a coat rack. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's just going by on my uh, copy of the stream here. So, I do believe uh, I do believe with the coat rack, I think we're going back into the reception room now, because I don't recall there being a coat rack in the first class corridor or in any of the cabins per se, certainly not a multiple rack. There was one, however, in the entrance vestibule. Um... We've had someone asking if there's footage of the opened gangway door from the interior looking out. Um, I don't I, know if I we believe... have it, do we? I I believe there is the footage. I, I know the footage exists, mm -hmm. for sure. I Like you, I'm not too sure if we have it, but I think we do. Don't, don't quote me. I, I do believe the Archive Project has that footage, but... It's we're still go, going through a lot of it, and as you can see, there's a lot of jump cuts, and a lot of stuff needs to be properly categorized because we have the cut version of the Cameron footage, but there's still many, 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 many more hours of footage that we do not have. I think, and we don't have proper. We don't hours. have proper. Yeah, and we don't even have proper context for a lot of it, so we're just kind of analyzing as we go, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Uh, oh, here we go. Actually, speaking of the vestibule oh. and gangway doors, here we go. Uh, this is yep. on the I was right. starboard side, but this is not the open one. Um, but this will be looking at the back side of the closed gangway doors to starboard. Oh, what do you know? I was right. The coat with the coat rack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Ryan, you um, you, you've you've got Ghosts of the Abyss. Obviously, you've seen that. Of course. 
So you remember the the sideboard with the china that's fallen over? Yes. But we've got uh, in this particular section, there's another angle of it that didn't actually make it into the uh, the documentary. Uh, but this is where they were uh, right before. Oh, here we go. This is uh, what we were talking about before the uh, the distribution panel right there in the background, uh, kind of center screen at the moment. We've got the electrical distribution panel in the oh, entire yes, aft wall. Yep, right there. It's just I don't understand why they didn't use this footage. And it's there's so the sideboard. Good. Yeah, and there's the sideboard falling over there. This didn't get into the documentary, but um, as we get further into this, you're going to start seeing the camera feed starts to glitch out a bit, and shortly yeah, after that, it just cut cuts. It. Yeah, this is Elwood. Sorry I'm being quiet, by the way. I'm just, like, enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and uh, there there is the, uh, the, oh, the grill door, like you were saying. The, mm -hmm. These are identical to the doors that would have been led into the first-class dining saloon. Yeah. And like I said, very iconic. I mean, everybody recognizes the door. This is actually the same door that was featured in the movie Titanic. That's the exact same door. Just fun fun fact for the movie lovers out there. This is the exact same door that James Cameron first saw in his, uh, I believe it was 1995 expedition. Yeah, was they, did they use real footage of this door in the film? I knew they had yes, footage they of did. it. Yes, they did. Yeah. Was it yeah, one of the those... door used? The door you see in the movie is that is uh, uh, when you're not seeing the ROV, that is. But the door you see in the movie is actually the real door, the one you just saw. Yeah, I was going to say, I knew that they had real footage in the film, but I knew it was kind of intercut with uh, set pieces where they reconstructed this room and had some much higher resolution cameras that they filmed some of that with. But I knew they mm -hmm. had some in there. Yeah, I have a... You know, I have a high-res copy of James Cameron's Deep Dive presentation, although unfortunately, you know, due to legalities, we cannot upload it to the Archive Project. But for anyone who wants to see it, it is featured, I believe, on the uh, the three-disc limited edition of Titanic, and it may or may not be on the Blu-ray edition as well, the Blu-ray special edition. So anyone can pop that in and watch it. You know, honestly, I should check. I have the Blu-ray special edition, like... 10 feet from me. I'm going to go grab that quick. I'll see if it's in the special features list. <laughs> yeah, it should be the deep dive presentation. Okay, I'm going to just grab but, that. I'll um... come back and check. All right. Well, it looks like uh, it looks like Spencer has jumped ship and left me in charge. I I'm back. I, I, don't... <laughs> I was going 10 feet away. It's all right. It's just 10 feet. Oh, oh, and, I... oh and, and there we just saw the first of the glitches yep. from Elwood. And we're we are about ready to lose Elwood. Yeah, you know, the light you just seen the lights going on the yep, there. Yep, here we go. Oh, it's fun. The TCR stamp's still still running here. And, and he'll yep. come back one more time here, I think. Uh yep, there he comes back for just a brief minute here. No lights though? So. You get one yeah, lights. No lights on, but you do get um, a little bit of a look at that sideboard there. From Jake's uh from Jake's lighting. Too bad the quality wasn't better than what it is, because that would have been a really cool shot, just the dark. And up, oh, up, oh, there we go. Yep, there goes the black and white, and then it cuts again. Up, oh. up, uh, oh. goodbye, Elwood. And GX just turned around going, hey, my buddy. Oh, hey, hey we got one more. <laughs> ah! One more, just a lot of silt here. Almost got it. And there we go. It, that's the end of it there. Um. So... We were originally going to do the 2003 footage. I've just realized we do actually have uh, the recovery of that ROV. Should we take them through that? Sure. And you guys can see our lovely YouTube studio dashboard here while I find it for a minute. <laughs> uh, oh, good lord, which one is this? I don't believe it's particularly high quality because they, they didn't bother with trying to be cinematic on a rescue mission. Um... I believe it's in our older set of footage. I don't think this was part of our remastered James Cameron archive, uh, but we do have it. Oh, good lord. I can just search. Might be best just to save that for another stream. Um, but... <laughs> but, I mean, if you got it... I do. I mean, we can save it for another stream. Wouldn't want to spoil the surprise. I know that I have it in here, and I'm close to it. I just gotta find it. 
Oh, here it is. Yeah, here it is. I got it. Okay. Uh, here, let me go ahead and send you guys this link. Um, I'm gonna have to. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the starting soon screen for a moment while I do this because I don't want to, you know, open up my Facebook in front of everybody. So, I will go ahead and send that to you guys. Uh, we had a. Uh, Martin Banks was asking about if anyone's gotten into the gym and swimming pool, and the sh the the long the short answer is no. The long answer is that when Titanic was first filmed in you know <clears throat> 1980 uh, 1986 when uh, you know Alvin and Jason Jr. went down there, the roof of the gym had not yet totally collapsed but unfortunately jason jr was or jj jj was unfortunately too big to fit into the windows so we get only the barest glimpses of what's inside and then by the time later expeditions came the roof had collapsed now so unfortunately we, we've seen inside of it but briefly and the footage has never really been you know effectively released i've like i have actually few, yeah like i have actually like, tried so um like, guys if you go and if you, if you go and check your uh the messages the, the group chat that we're in i sent mm -hmm. a link to the rov rescue this one's not nearly as long as the last one it's only 15 minutes so we can still do our noah 2003 one if we've got time after but uh, I figured this would be a nice way to, to wrap up the james cameron interior footage because you know got left on a cliffhanger right. there cliffhangers aren't cool man have you ever seen the Italian job? Okay, that's cool. That, that's fair. <laughs> All right, so I got the archive footage. Uh, I got the link pulled up, so just whenever you say go. All righty, uh, give me just a moment here. But yeah, with regards to the swimming pool, uh, finishing up my train of thought and answering uh, your, your question, Martin, uh, James Cameron tried to to find access to the swimming pool, but unfortunately there was a collapse in and around Scotland Road because there is actually access there. Not many people are aware of this, but even though the watertight door on F deck was closed, E deck is the top of the ice cube tray, so to say. You know, that's where the watertight bulkheads end. So if he had gone down Scotland Road, like maybe the third or fourth door down on the right, he would have come to a um, a wardrobe. I mean, it was kind of like a laundry service for linens. And inside li the linen you know, service was a stairwell. The stairwell went down to F deck, down a, ser a service corridor, went through the laundry services where, they, of course, they supplied towels and blankets for the uh, people who were using the Turkish baths and the pool. If he'd have gone down those stairs and down that service corridor, the doorway, which was made of wood, most likely has decayed. He could have gotten into the swimming pool through the back just by going up and over the watertight bulkhead. But given the way Scotland Road has just totally collapsed, there's a lot of compression damage there. It was, it was deemed too risky to really poke the ROV around. And then, of course... For those of you who saw his Last Mysteries of the Titanic video, which was done in 2005, I believe, during that particular expedition, he actually had video interference trouble with Jake. And so <laughs> remembering how things failed with Elwood in Ghosts of the Abyss, he didn't want to repeat. So it's... um. Oh, uh, hun <laughs> Hunter, uh, jumping in. Uh, Hunter, do not lose faith. Do not lose hope. Because as the Titanic continues to collapse, you know, the rusticles continue to fall and certain paneling begins to deteriorate, there might actually open up another means of access. We honestly don't know. Um, there's a So there's the watertight door in the F-deck corridor that's closed between the staircase and the hallway that leads to the pool. Uh, was there not also in the hallway 
that sits between the actual electric baths and the Turkish bath cooling room. There is a corridor that goes into that pool, isn't there? Yes, that's that... the one that I was referring to. Oh, okay. So that's But it's on but it's on the opposite side of the watertight door. The watertight door actually does separate the two from the electric baths and the pool. There is a bulkhead there. Gotcha. But there right. is there is a there is a linen service corridor that runs the length of the of the ship from the linen service one deck above down to the pool. This is just kind of an ease of access for stewards to you know, take care of the passengers who are in the pool, and then they just go through the watertight door into the Turkish bath service room. So you guys got the the link to the ROV rescue video, I right? I do. All right, you guys have that pulled up and at zero, zero, zero? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll go ahead and play that in three, two, one. Go. Now, obviously, there's not going to be a whole lot. Also, uh, this starts in black and white, but it does cut in with color footage oh, sure. oh, yeah. very quickly afterwards. Um, it's not all in black and white. Uh, but you, you, the E and D deck, or the D deck and E deck framework that I was talking about with the Grand Staircase, you, you'll see that in this uh, particular bit of footage. Um, now, other than that, we're going to be seeing a lot of repeat areas, so I figure while we've got this running, we can take some audience questions. If you guys wouldn't mind. Alrighty. Alrighty, yeah, if you guys have questions, go ahead and uh, send them in the chat. I've got the live chat open, so I can monitor anything you say. Yeah, same thing as well. I've been I've been looking at the uh, chat periodically. Yeah. yeah, we've actually had a fairly active live stream. Hello, all you gorgeous people. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, though, like I'm just gonna say though, I actually quite like the footage in black and white. It does give it kind of like an ethereal sort of feeling. Yeah. Bump up the contrast; it might even show you some detail that you wouldn't otherwise notice. That's what I do like about black and white. Things do tend to come out in better detail in black and white. Yeah, honestly, I might try and boost the contrast on that at some point and see if there's anything that like you notice. Just because, like, your, your eye is obviously drawn to color. But if you remove color, then it's drawn to contrast, you know? Yeah. And obviously, like, any sort of out-of-place objects will appear darker and whatnot, and they'll stand out a bit better. Yeah. So... That's a good idea. We have uh, had quite a few people that seem very enthusiastic about these kinds of streams, um, wanting to see more of this. We have, what, 34 hours of footage in the archive currently? Something about that, yeah. We we do maybe an hour a week. We we could probably get through the entire archive in a little over half a year, so that's a decent amount of content, and we're looking to add new stuff all the time. Uh, I don't know if you guys would be opposed. We'd obviously have to talk about this a lot more, you know, internally and off stream. But maybe making this a weekly thing where we have uh, just a casual sit and chat and analyze footage kind of stream like this. Obviously, we'll have to talk quite a bit more later on about that, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. Oh, definitely not. Um, so uh, Jill has uh, jumped on. She's saying hi, and also Amber has um, asked a very, very loaded question. <laughs> oh, I see it. <laughs> you you, you want to read it out, Matt? Um, so... Okay, well, uh, so Amber is asking, what brought each of you to Titanic? Spencer, Matthew, and Ryan. Um, okay, well, that's a loaded question, so let me get to the next the next question first. Um, there, we've got a couple of questions that are coming in, so we might want to save that till like towards the that one question towards the end. That that's um, one that has a story attached to it for everyone. So yeah. Yeah, we we might do another. Okay, so to answer that question, who we are and what brought us to Titanic, we might actually have to make a dedicated live stream specifically to answer that because that is not yeah, a short that'll, answer yeah that would go on for like seven hours <laughs> we could go um, for uh just quick edited videos so that we don't have to you know keep getting sidetracked we'll just do yeah, a, a video um, and make a compilation of it or something yeah, we'll, we'll we'll we will answer that question, Amber. I promise. But it will have to be another video because that that's actually a loaded question. <laughs> um, um, okay, so we we do have a question from Hunter. Have they looked down into the bosun hatch 
uh, between the anchor chains. Uh, no, I do not believe they have, just because the uh, bosun's lock, the bosun's hatch. I, I believe you're referring to the hatch located directly behind the anchor crane on the foredeck. That particular hatch was just a little too small. I know at one point they actually peer inside of it, but I don't believe anything is visible. And to the best of my knowledge, no clip of it is currently within the archive project, but I will check. I, I will double check because, you know, I, I cannot say for absolutely certain. I know there was actually a, a glimpse of it at one point where Elwood, Elwood was actually looking down, but I don't see the footage from that. So I will look. Um, I, I will believe look, Hunter. that would be in our James Cameron 2005 section. There's a couple of 30-minute yes. videos on the Foxhole, uh, and they're they're both recorded at the same time, but it's the respective feeds from both of the ROVs. I think that'd probably be the best bet because they start near the cargo hatch and they work their way forward. Yeah, and this also partially answers um, Elliot's question. Um, Elliot was asking, I'm not quite sure specific names, but where the front digs into the mud, is it possible to get into it, or is it collapsed due to impact? And the answer is, it is absolutely accessible, and a couple of expeditions, a couple of expeditions actually have gotten in there um, a, as far back as 1996, I believe, when RMS Titanic Incorporated, they sent the... Uh, the, the ROV Robin down into the forward cargo hold. But then, of course, James Cameron also sent vehicles down there, Jake and Elwood, during Ghosts of the Abyss. So we actually have quite a bit of footage of the bow section, even below the mud line. I think we actually do have some of that footage in our archive. Uh, I think E and F deck, some of the third class open spaces down there. I I'm fairly certain we've got that. Yeah. And um, also, uh, Cy Cyan. Uh, zero, I, I hope I'm science like science, but cyan zero. Has there been any attempt to get into the boiler rooms? The answer is yes. Um, during the 2005, during the 2005 expedition, they tried two avenues to get into the boiler room. They tried going down, like they actually did try to go down the forward funnel. They actually tried going down the fiddlies in the funnel, but they were too hazardous, and there was just no access. Then, of course, naturally, when he tried going down Scotland Road on um, E-Deck, he was trying to go down the fiddly escape ladders for Boiler Room 5 and 6. Unfortunately, Boiler Room 5 was not accessible, and Boiler Room 6, there was a bit of a collapse. And right when he was debating about going down that hatch he had video trouble and decided not to risk it because he might risk losing the ROV. That and the, uh, the Scotland Road attempt, I believe, uh, they, they looked in and it was just too much of a mess inside there, wasn't it? Yeah, no, it was It was just, it, it's like it's like cave diving down there. Scotland Road doesn't look like anything now. It's compressed and, to, what, um, three feet? Yeah. It, from ceiling to floor? It, it's, yeah, it, it's it, it's pretty crushed. It, it's, pretty, it's pretty hairy in there. Um... Okay, we've got Samuel, uh, Jill, Anka, and Hunter, and, um, yeah, um, okay, uh, I so... do want to make a, a, a quick aside here, because I, I, I wanted to mention something while we're at this. Um, as far as the Grand Staircase dome, uh, Matt, I'll let you take the answer for the forward staircase. I know Hunter mentioned the aft dome. Uh, Ryan? Hello! Correct me if I'm wrong, you guys have footage on the Titanic Connections channel of the debris field that shows that aft dome, don't you? Hold on a second, actually. I, I was thinking I saw that earlier in the thumbnail for your debris field footage. Hold on a minute. I think you could be right. It's either that or... Oh. I think we do, actually. Hold um, on a minute. Let's... Let me see. Hey, Matt. Uh, pause... oh, yeah, we do. We do. Um, guys, pause your footage for just a minute. I'm going to back up like 10 seconds. Just stay where you're at. Uh, three, two, one, pause. Because I wanted to show something that I've just seen here. Um, if you're looking down towards the bottom of the frame here, there's the uh, iron grill from one of the reception room doors that has fallen away. You can actually see it kind of buried in silt, sediment, and rusticles down on the floor here. It 
it's uh if, if you guys are looking for it, it's at the it's roughly the eight minute and thirty second mark. But here I'm gonna skip forward ten seconds again and uh we can go and resume in you guys are at like eight thirty seven, right? Eight forty seven. Eight forty seven? Okay. Three, two, one, play. Okay. Okay. And, I, um, and then just I, finishing I just... my quick aside though is uh Okay. Titanic Connections. Uh, Ryan, you guys have a meeting uh, that you're doing a live stream with Ocean Gate in the next couple of weeks, right? Yes, we are doing that on Saturday the 13th of February. Uh, it's half 10 my time. So uh, that's in the UK. So that there is going to be, what is that, about half four or five o'clock for you guys? Uh, I believe so. You'll have to double check me on that. I believe there's about a five hour time difference between uh, Belfast and the East Coast. So that would be if it's 10.30, 9.30? I don't speak half 10. Uh, that's that's I, I, my, my, my American brain does not deal well with UK time formats. Um, <laughs> but that'd be it would be five hours before um, on the East Coast. Um, Matt, if you wanted to continue, though. Yeah, okay. I wanted to address um, – Anka was asking about the forward grand staircase. I wanted to address that. There, There's – um, so this is not necessarily a short answer, but I do the best I can. The grand – it's important to understand how the grand staircase was built to to answer this question. We the As we saw and as Hunter addressed, we have the dome from the aft grand staircase located in the debris field. And it's in, I mean, it's it's like half the dome, but it's reasonably intact. And um, I wanted to point out the reason oh, for this. Yeah, yeah, I see Elwood. But yeah, the reason for this is because when the Titanic broke in half, the dome just kind of popped out and was thrown into the debris field during the breakup. But with the forward grand staircase... The forward grand staircase, the dome, and the weather cover is completely missing. And the reason for this is because the grand staircase, the way it was built, it was basically held in place by its own weight. And as we all know, wood floats. So you have a wooden structure that's, what, four, five stories high, six stories high, of A deck, B deck, C deck, D deck, E deck, and technically if we count the little landing on F deck and the boat deck level, you know, we're talking six stories of wood. All of it is very, very, you know, floatable, very, very buoyant. And so as Titanic descended to the bottom, the grand staircase literally broke loose like a giant battering ram. And it basically knocked out the dome for the grand staircase. It probably obliterated it. This is why we see pieces. They have seen pieces of the dome, like little small fragments have been seen here and there, I understood. I know that there was wrought iron uh, framing from the, uh, the, uh, the railing, the decorative railing in the grand staircase. There was actually from the balustrades. But... It just seems to me that the grand staircase basically broke loose during the descent, and it knocked the dome out and probably shattered it. You know, it probably took the whole thing, weather, weather dome, and all. You know, honestly, uh, Matt, you bring up a good point there, and I've there's been a lot of debate in the community over the years, and I'm sure everyone here's heard it at some point over whether or not the staircase broke apart and floated up, or was ejected through the back end of the bow, and. You've just made a very good point. I believe... I'm not saying this is like, I'm going to make up my mind right here and this is what I believe, but it, I believe there's room for uh, a possibility of a mixture of both, where before the bow gets moving particularly quickly under the surface, you could have large chunks of wood lifting up and, as you mentioned, you know, obliterating the grand staircase dome and uh, the weather cover. But you could also have the decks further down being ejected through the broken end of the bow further aft. So you could end up having a mix of both, which would explain both the missing dome, the missing weather cover, and the reasoning for the D-deck candelabra being found behind the back end of the bow section. You'd have to have yeah, a mixture that, of both. Now, yeah, and that's why I was suggest I was I was actually going to bring that up because it's it's actually fascinating. 
Now, I know people are going to ask a world of questions about this, but I have heard directly from source that the the cherub, the bronze cherub from the Grand Staircase is inside the bow. They It was spotted in the debris in 1996, and it has not been seen since. It's buried. But that, coupled with the fact that the candelabra was found ejected from the stern of the ship out through the tear it seems to me that the landings themselves the actual like the foot of the landings because there's that one single support column that had the candelabra there's that one single support column that had the cherub it seems to me that the stairs themselves broke loose you know that would make sense because you find a lot of the metal and the iron debris sitting aft of the bow but iron and bronze are not buoyant uh wood, wood very much is so I, yeah. I you could easily have a breaking apart uh, especially if it's battering itself through that dome which has wrought iron on it you could probably find yourself having a situation where these you know already ripped loose and not structurally supported sections of balustrade are being knocked loose from the iron fittings and those falling further back in while the wood floats out there actually was a great question that came in there actually about the funnels, if, uh, if I can sort of give a bit of an explanation to it. Uh, it was basically somebody was asking, uh, and speaking of the funnels, what was our opinion that there, that basically there's no funnels in good condition on the wreck. Uh, well, the reason for that, you know, they were, yes, they were made of steel, but they were made of very, very thin, like, sheet steel, all riveted together. Uh, as the ship sank, as we know, they started collapsing at their bases and um, so on and so forth. Now, because they are so thin that their metal, like the steel, would rot away on the seabed, there is still, well, on some of the footage that is out there, there still is tiny remnants of the funnels. At least there was a good few years back. And things like, obviously, like the brass whistles, whistles and things did survive. They actually did recover some of those. Um, but yeah, that's a very simple explanation. The reason why there isn't any good funnels in good condition is because of the conditions and the fact that they were made of such thin steel. And, and Ryan, uh, you, you bring that up at a very convenient time. The ROV rescue footage has ended. I've switched over to the NOAA 2003 stuff, but we're getting up to the ADEC promenade here. And the reason I put this particular one up in this case is because uh, you're mentioning this very thin metal, and there's a great example of this on the ADEC promenade here. And we're actually looking at it right now as I'm talking about this, where some of the areas above the frames, they're a very thin metal, and they've been completely eaten away by the rust, and ha they have those window frames still in place, despite the metal being largely eaten away around them. But I'd say the, the ADEC promenade and the funnels were a very similar thickness, weren't they? Oh, excuse Sorry, I got distracted trying to find where you are in the video. <laughs> oh, here, I'll, I'll go ahead and pause. Um, I'm going to skip back to about the one minute mark because that's where I got a really nice shot of the thing. It's actually the video I sent you guys earlier in the chat, the ADEC promenade and boiler room one. Okay, two seconds, I'm just going to get that up now. Sorry, my computer's just been a little bit slow. Right, so we're on the 2003, yeah? Uh, yeah, it's 2003, the ADEC promenade and boiler room were about a minute in. You should be looking at the ADEC promenade's enclosed portion yeah. just forward to the expansion joint. I am at W just to go to one minute seven. Uh, one minute, just dead on. Okay. Um, by the I... way, um, for anyone who is in our audience that is not aware, uh, this is all footage that can be found at the Titanic Archive Project website, which if you have not been to yet, it is just www.titanicarchiveproject.com. We have, uh, we actually do not have a link to it in the description. Uh, when this stream gets re-uploaded, I'm going to add in a link to the Archive Project website and also to the Titanic Connections Facebook page, uh, because, you know, Ryan is the president of Titanic Connections, for those of you tuning in. Uh, say hi, hey. Ryan. Yeah. This guy. Well, what's the crack? He's a lot of fun. We like having him around. Uh, but we'll leave a link to their Facebook page. So you can go check them out. Uh, and we'll leave a link to our website and to our Facebook page as well. So you guys can go check that out. But we've got over 34 hours of footage like this. And you could easily spend a week analyzing everything you can find in it. Uh, but if you haven't seen that yet, yeah, go check it out. 
Um, but anyway, we can get going here. What were you saying, Ryan? I can't remember. I'm at, well, I would say that was at one minute, so yes, I'm at one minute. Yes, one minute. All right. Uh, Matt, are you at one minute? Have we lost him? Matt's dead. Uh-oh. Uh, I will message Matt. Uh, Ryan, for now, let's you and I keep going here. Oh, God. Uh, we, we were talking about the thin metal <laughs> on the funnels, was what we were talking about. Yes. Okay, so go ahead and three, two, one, play. I'm going to go ahead and message Matt while we do this. Um, okay. One moment. Can you hear me? Oh, yep, there we I go. Just, okay, I just. Yay, you, you, can, you can ignore my message. Uh, but so yeah. these uh, holes that you're seeing above the windows in the promenade here, uh, very, very thin metal similar to those funnels. Um, and I would imagine that these funnels, having been through a fairly traumatic descent and impact with the bottom and being cylindrical likely on their side, as that metal thins out, they just collapse under their own weight. So at this point, they'd, they'd be there, but they'd be very little more than a pile of rusted and oxidized metal. Yeah. Okay, so right about here, I have to jump in and give a shameless plug for Titanic Connections on Facebook. We already because, did that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I just I just wanted – because I, I just cut out there for a minute, and I just wanted to say I actually did a post about the funnels a couple of weeks ago where I highlighted the various remnants of the funnels in the debris field, and you can find it on the Facebook page under the search Wreck Thursday. Yes. Uh, Matt, for anyone who is not aware, does write uh, a majority, if not all, of the Wreck Thursday posts, correct? Uh, not all of them, no. I just do like – I do like the technical post. But Anka has a wonderful Did You Know a Wreck Thursday post, and we all kind of – you know, she and I together, we do the Wreck Thursdays together. Lovely. Uh, I do want to take a moment. Uh, we're – for 2.36, I'm going to go ahead and pause here in 3, 2, 1, pause. Uh, reason being, I want to skip back about 15 seconds. Uh, make it 20 seconds. And you can see here, uh, this this is something that I, I don't really see talked about a lot. Uh, but I, I, I didn't really know this up until 2010. Uh, there's this footage here starts showcasing the collapse of the A-deck promenade near the Grand Staircase area. And yeah. I'm sure you guys remember having the, you know, the disconnect with this kind of information before 2010, because when the centenary passed and the, the hundred year issues for National Geographic came out with all those photo mosaics, I, I had still in my mind the image of the wreck as it was in like the 90s. And there wasn't really a lot of footage that showcased how far it had deteriorated. So when I saw that the ADEC promenade had collapsed as far forward as it had by 2010, it was just a complete shock to me. And like, I had no idea that, like, even when Ghosts of the Abyss was being filmed, this was already kind of like this, where the ADAC promenade had started falling in on itself. So to me, that was just completely new information. I was just shocked by this apparently sudden collapse. But then working yeah, on the yeah. archive project, you get this 2003 footage, and you realize a lot of this damage that didn't really become public knowledge until, like, 2010, 2012, in that time frame, it had happened years before. Which makes me also wonder as well, though, that obviously, like, we had a particular Titanic documentary come out last year. Mm -hmm. Now, yet again, it was showing a lot of what a lot of Titanic documentaries tend to do, is they show the money shots. Yep. Now, the thing is, it really has been, realistically, a 10-year gap since we've seen anything substantial. Like, you can see the difference, for example, you know, from you know, 98, 99, 2000, up until 2010, there's a massive, oh, just as we're here, that we're outside the gymnasium right now, aren't we? Uh, yeah, you're around the 2 minute, 26 second mark, right? Uh, I am at two, uh, 3, oh wait, no, I'm at 3.33, whoops. Oh yeah, you've got, uh, you just get playing, man. <laughs> we're back at like 2.27. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, no, but what was I saying? I lost track. No, but since then, like, it would be great. I'm looking forward to the next expedition, hopefully we get some new really good footage that we can actually see. Because I would say, uh, yeah, because I would say there's quite a bit more, like, obviously some things have changed in the last 10 years as they did between 2000 and 2010, so, but the thing is, what are the changes? Has that area 
almost completely collapsed now, or you know, what's the situation? We don't know. Exactly. Um, if you guys give me just a minute, I'm going to go ahead and hit play here. And Matt and Ryan, you guys were talking about the gymnasium here. Uh, if you guys, you guys were talking about it earlier as well. If you want to go over some of those changes to the gymnasium, I'm, I'm going to be gone for just like a minute or two. I'll be right back, but I'm going to hit play here uh, in about three. We're at 227, right? 227. Yes. Hold on a second, my friend. 227. Okay. So we're at okay. 227, and I'll go ahead and three, two, one play and then you guys go ahead and go over the changes to the gymnasium because honestly they're quite drastic uh between like 85 to 2010 there's your there's a talking point i'll be back in like two minutes (laughs) all right well shall i lead us off ryan okay well also i sort of spoiled the surprise there because i sort of went there's a gymnasium and everybody's (laughs) okay it's already ahead of everybody (laughs) well (laughs) it's all right um Okay, so the gymnasium, a lot of people want to see the gymnasium, and, okay, I would first like to say, just to re reiterate my point that I made earlier, the gymnasium was somewhat intact when Titanic was first, you know, first filmed, of course, first spotted in 1985, and then first filmed in 1986, but the ROV, Jason Jr. could not get inside. They were and, able to, if we remember correctly, though, we were told, though, that they were able to see stuff through the window. They just couldn't get to it. Yes. Yes. There, you know, there's quite a bit of testimony from people who were on the expedition, uh, <clears throat> expedition, I'm sorry, who they did say, you know, that they had seen what looked like gears and possibly uh, one of the mechanical horses with a, a rotting leather saddle on it. I mean, I don't know. It, I, I have not seen the footage myself, and I have tried to get a hold of it, but unfortunately, so, okay, I know I've brought this up before, but I have to bring it up again, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. Oh boy. When we were, re- when we were, re- uh, I'm just going to say, when we were reaching, when we were reaching out for footage for the Titanic wreck for the archive project, Woods Hole is specifically one of the people I contacted, naturally, because they're the ones that have the, you know, the first ever footage. But they wanted something to the effect of, I'm not joking, and I swear I'm not making this up, they wanted $50 a second of video footage. Now, you guys look at... Yeah, you guys look at all this wonderful footage we're watching right now. Think of how many seconds we have been sitting here watching this. Imagine the price tag for $50 a second of what we have just been watching. And, you know, I I tried to get some clips, you know, maybe as a donation. My request was denied. And um, it's you know I have not I have not tried to repursue that avenue. Maybe I shall. Um, but I, I would like to. I would like I would like to see the gym footage. I would like to see the gym footage from the time it was discovered. I I just like to cut in here for a minute to to go over a little bit more of the ludicrousness of those costs uh, because we actually did the math on it. We'll say your I'm average. We'll, we'll say your average dive is what eight hours on the wreck. Uh huh. Okay. So you're, oh, uh, by the way footage right now we're kind of near the raised roof over the over the lounge it's collapsed down almost vertically here but you can see one of the intact uh vertical posts for the railings on this uh but no so eight hours at the wreck right yeah now if you break it down eight hours of footage from woods hole would cost us 1.4 million dollars your average dive on the wreck would cost us 1.4 million to get the footage from from Woods Hole. However, Ocean Gate is selling spots on their expedition at $125,000 a ticket, which, you know, I'm going to run the math quick here just to, you know, verify. You do about, you do about maybe what, 13 dives? 12, 13 dives? I'm just going to run the math here, be absolutely certain. Uh, divided by, so you're going. It's about 
You could do 11.2 dives, if you want to be precise, to the wreck of Titanic in person for the cost Hello. of one dive's worth of footage from Woods Hole. It's ludicrous. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, speaking of which, Ryan, you're, you're, you're speaking with Ocean Gate soon. Uh, you know, you could oh, uh, don't worry. nominate don't worry. us. <laughs> don't worry. But, well, here's the thing. Which the great news is, so I do believe all of the because I do think Ocean Gate understand that Titanic freaks like ourselves do want this footage, and from what I understand from the conversations I've had with Kyle, um, they are fully on board to make all of the footage publicly available. Oh, lovely! That that, that would be. Um something we'll have to talk about more in in our own conversations yeah. that aren't as public um, obviously um, you, you kind of know where i'd like to go with that but <laughs> yeah um, um but also they seem like really great guys and they seem to be like us i think yet again it's like rmsti all over again i think a lot of people may have misconceptions about what they're actually doing but they are going there for a survey expedition you know like it's not like you know, like they are going to be surveying the wreck, which is great. And it's great for us. You know, at the end of the day, a lot of people may complain, oh, people shouldn't be going down. But the problem is at the moment, it looks like RMSTI from, I'm just going off news reports here at the moment. Nothing is confirmed by them as far as I'm concerned uh, that they have postponed their expedition this year. Ocean Gate are still planning and going ahead. Uh, so if you actually want to see some new Titanic stuff this year from the wreck, maybe late this year, next year, you know, it's it's good as far as I'm concerned because we actually get more footage, you know. Um, I I just want to cut in here really quick, and uh, I want to address uh, General Skywalker and Hunter. They're they're both and uh, Peter, I believe they're they're mentioning about going down into the third class stairwell in the stern section. I would like to address these questions and these statements that were made. Okay, so to first off to answer your question, Peter, yes, they did try to go down there. And uh, yes, Mr. Skywalker, you are generally cor you are generally correct. <laughs> nice uh, rather uh, uh, Bill uh, Bill was also generally correct. There was there was nothing of in there didn't see anything of interest. Now, okay, let me elaborate on that. The from what I understood myself, having talked to some people who were on those expeditions, I believe they sent they were planning to send Robin down there in uh, 1996. I'm not sure if they did. I have not seen the tapes and the footage from Ephraim I know um, P.H. Nargile has that footage, and so does RMS Titanic Incorporated. Now, I do know at some point a penetration dive was made inside the third class stairwell, but the area had really, really pancaked. So they kind of went down there, and there was just no, it was just like, like, you know how you open a box, and it's just a square open space? Well, that's essentially what it was. They lowered the ROV down there, and there was just a square open space with rusticles everywhere. There was just collapse everywhere. Now, that was back in the 90s, from what I understood. It may or may not have opened up since then. Well, it, Matt. There, there was There was access that was not there later that you know back in 1991 so that access might have opened up again now hey matt uh, it is worth a note for anyone wanting interior exploration of the stern at this point check me if i'm wrong here matt ryan either of you the stern is effectively a pile at this point with the exception of the highest point on the fantail it has collapsed what 40 feet since the 80s which, if you yeah, average it couple, out, it's, there's yeah. a couple of little smidgety bits on the stern that are, but as far like you know what I mean, like you're basically it's a bomb site. You know, you're basically going through rubble and occasionally find recognizable bits. But as, think Lusitania. You know, it's everything. Um, think, yeah, Lusitania. Well, <laughs> think worse. Well, well. Yeah. 
I, I, I like to say poking around the stern is more akin to exploring, quote-unquote, the collapsed rubble of the world trade center rather than exploring an ocean liner. Yeah. You're not going to like, find yeah. much of anything. Like with the bar, yeah. Titanic Everhands, you sort of roughly know where you are. With the stern, you can get lost incredibly easily. With the exception of a couple of, you know, trademark features of the stern, uh, like obviously the engines and the actual shape of the uh, of the poop deck, and a couple of other little minor things that Matthew has pointed out. But uh, you know, the whole it's a bomb site. You know, it's. It's a bomb site that has rusted, decayed, and collapsed further than its original pile of rubble ever was. At this point, it's. I oh, um, would say, if you want a good approximation of what you're going to find inside I, the stern, I just want to. I I want to cut in here just to interrupt. We are in between one of the boilers, in back in I believe boiler room number two, mm -hmm. and we just had a silt up, but we were just looking at the space, the spacing between the two boilers. So yeah. we're actually getting a good up close and personal with the boilers, but do continue, Spence. Uh, so we see people saying the stern deserves more love, and I, I agree the stern deserves documentation. But if you really do want to get an idea of what it's like to be inside the stern, I would say a reasonable approximation is if you were to take, let's say, a scale model. If you were to take a pile of toothpicks, dump them on each other and set it so that they couldn't move, and then cover it in silt and heavily rusted stuff. That, that's You could put a, an endoscopy camera into that pile of rusted up toothpicks, and you would be barely capable of distinguishing the difference between that and the interior of the stern. You're not looking at rooms, you're looking at the collapsed girders that once supported rooms that are now, they have girders from three different decks mixed into a pile all together in something that it used to be effectively, what, a 10, 15-story building that's collapsed into effectively three or four stories? Yeah. It's, it's just, just not of, there. You know, it, it, the boat deck is on... Just, just to give you an example here, the boat deck... Well, I mean, the first off, the boat deck is basically non-existent. It's, it's like... It's, it's, <laughs> a deck is gone... B deck is crushed no. and actually actually flattened out and twisted off ang off you know like a skew, so you have A deck on level with D deck. Think about that for a minute. You have B deck, C deck, and D deck completely crushed in some areas, and you have um, other areas where the interior is intact. But um, hey, uh, just a note, guys. Um, Matt, you can continue in a second. I'm switching us over to some stern footage. Ah, all right. This is an overhead and, pass. Uh, you can continue, Matt. Well, yeah, but the, the stern section, I've spent a lot of time analyzing the footage that we have in the archive project, trying to make heads or tails of it for, you know, the posts that we do in Titanic Connections, and even just to help Spencer and uh, another another volunteer we have with us, Garrett, a shout out to him. He's awesome. He does a lot. He does a lot of the uh, description work with us. But trying to help them make heads or tails of the stern section is just incredibly difficult. It is incredibly difficult. You have you have to keep your eyes open all the time, and you you don't blink. You don't dare blink, otherwise you lose your orientation. It's literally that simple, because you have. We're coming like, over the fan like, tail like, over to the uh, yeah. third class general room now. All right, like Spencer described. It, it's like a building that has been destroyed by a bomb. And honestly, the, the, the description using the World Trade Center was very appropriate, not only in terms of the tragedy, but also in terms of just the description. The stern section does not look like a ship anymore. Once you go past the, the poop deck, the third class open well deck, I mean, well, the third class open well deck is completely gone. It's, um, it's been pushed down by compression and the poop deck has been peeled back you got the shape of the stern you got the shape of the stern right where the propellers and the rudder are but everything past it is just completely gone so, I, always I mean it's there it's just completely unrecognizable mangled twisted and just 
it's like we're, we're looking at it now. Like, honestly, I, I could ask if you're in the audience, take a look at what you're looking at and try and explain on a technical level what it is you're seeing right here. It's just if you go into the interior of the stern section, you're going to find more of this. I actually always did enjoy the a really good description of the poop deck that it was basically somebody had ripped it open like a sardine tin. Yeah, <laughs> and that that's a very apt description because if is. you ever opened a sardine can, you see the way the lid peels back. That's yeah, exactly what happened to the stern. It's just there are, for all intents and purposes, there are entire rooms that are still technically on the stern, but they're not where they're supposed to be. They've been picked up and mangled and deposited somewhere else. Oh, hey, that's an interesting... Hey, that looks a little bit like... What, stop the video? Uh, uh, and also... What was the timestamp? Uh, go back to... Were you what? looking at the bow footage still, Ryan? Yeah, no, also, no, you, also, you might want to send us the link. Oh, uh, the link. yeah, here. Uh, oh wait! I, I, whoops! <laughs> no, I just yeah. oh, wait, I, I was looking at the uh, the word uh, a deck from an odd border room. Uh, no, I just came across something very interesting, but I'll bring that up at a different point. <laughs> Here, give me a second. I'm gonna send you guys the uh, the link to this. I just gotta. I just realized me and Matthew are like looking at two different like me and Matthew look at the same thing and like you're like yeah yeah he's he's put the stern on the uh, live stream. I, I have. Well, we, we were just kind of chatting stern, but I, 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 I didn't send you the link. That was my bad. Well, no, well, no what? See, just never get a minute, Matthew. See, on the newer 20, uh, 2003 footage, go to 17 minutes 33, and you tell me what that looks like. 1743? 17 Are you All on right. the. Here, I'm going to open that back up. Just for a minute here. I don't, I don't believe, like I guess a minute, it's not what I think it is, but it looks incredibly similar to something else on Titanic. Uh, let me, uh, let me take a look. That definitely looks like a part of one of the cargo crates. Like, do the end bit. Alright, one second. You're at 1733, Ryan? Yeah, it has like the identical shape to like the actual cargo cream winch. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and put this up on screen for a minute here. Okay, I'm looking at 1733. Okay, I am okay. at 17. Oh. That, you see that? And it looks like, and it looks like a big yes. bar through the back of it? Yes, that is actually one of the large. Uh, it's it's very deceptive because that is actually one of the large hull frames, one of the large yeah. steel, one of the large steel frames that would have gone up the hull plating. It's got it's. It looks identical though, doesn't it? Almost. Yeah, at a at a glance, it does look like a crane, especially with that that bar running through the top of it. Yeah, and the two little like bits at the end, like the fact that it's like two separate bits of steel, so it goes in that sort of shape. No, I, I'm sitting there going, it's not a crane, it's just like completely in the wrong part of the ship, but I thought it was quite an interesting little tidbit. Very, very dangerous. Alright, here, we'll, we'll switch back over to our uh, stern footage here. But yeah, I, I was showcasing what you guys were looking at on the screen here. Uh, by the way, Matt, if you want to synchronize with the stern footage, we are at 3 minutes and 21 seconds on that uh, video. Alright. Um, we have a couple of people talking about the stern as it appears in Titanic VR. Uh, I will say it is fairly accurate for 1986-ish, but still in a bit better condition than it really was, I would imagine. Matt? Y yes, I, um... Yeah, the... We, we honestly, you know, some of these questions, I hope you're taking notes, because, um... Uh, are you at 321? Some these, yes, some of these questions need to be addressed in future videos because these are some good questions that are, you know, worthy of live streams in of themselves. You know, honestly, we should do at some point a stream where the three of us go through Titanic VR for a while and kind of talk about accurate things versus inaccurate. 
Like, obviously, in, internally, most of it is uh, miles away from what it actually is, but um, exterior-wise, I've actually had a, a bit of a revival with Titanic VR, because I had like 125 hours in it, and I'm up to maybe 134 at this point, just going through the exterior portions and comparing them to footage. Uh, Ryan, are you at 321 in the Stern video? I am. Alrighty, uh, we'll get this going again. Three, two, one, play. Uh, but yeah, no, I think that would be an interesting stream to, to take a whack at. It'd be a very slow, methodical exploration of the exterior and maybe some parts of the interior, like uh, the reception room and the Turkish baths and that kind of area, because those are, I'd say, the closest approximations. Yeah. It's just the fact is, I think, you know, it's, it comes down to the fact is, it is a game, and the fact is, I would imagine the people who were working on that game didn't, obviously they didn't have the the resources that we have. No, it would have been great that, if the uh, archive project had been around a few years back when they were making that, because that, that probably would have helped them out quite a bit. Um, if they, well, I don't know, I'm not going to go down that road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, well, look, that's, that's a loaded thing, but I wanted to say that I actually need to step away. I have uh, some other things that need to be taken care of, and we've kind of gone a little bit... We over, have! Of the we yeah, have we gone have. very over. <laughs> we we definitely have. Uh, it's a good time though. Um... But um, I do think I you know we've given we've given people a little sample of the stern section. I think this needs to be a dedicated stream specifically for the stern. If we're all paying attention, we might actually see something worth identifying. But I feel like this is something that needs to be saved for another stream. We've had 34 people watching us, and I want to shout out to everyone who's jumped on. You guys are awesome. But I think we need to have a dedicated stream for the Stern section yeah. where we can all focus, because who knows? <laughs> you guys might see something that I miss. Well, I mean, we will do that, and uh, I, I suppose we'll, we'll probably let you go. Um, and, and Ryan, you and I, we can either hang around for a couple of minutes here, or we can uh, get going as well. Well, I, I'm going to have to go in three minutes. <laughs> oh, alrighty. Well, then I suppose that's as good of a place as any to wrap things up. Uh, yeah, apologies for going over, Matt and uh, Ryan. We'll, Don't worry. We'll Best talk. <laughs> we'll talk. Uh, we should look into, if we can, making this a fairly regular thing. Uh, I like to come to that. Alright, as for everyone else, uh, it's been great having you guys here. We really appreciate your support. This stream will be re-uploaded very shortly, and we'll have links to Titanic Connections in the description, uh, both their Facebook page and their YouTube channel, and we will have a link to the Archive Project website and Facebook page as well. Uh, so I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your day, and thank you for being here. Thanks, everyone.